Um, today I'll talk about the work graph convolutional networks for web scale recommender systems. And this is a work done uh, with people from Pinterest and Stanford University. Um, so as we all know, uh, recommender systems can be modeled by uh, this structure of, uh, uh, yes, sorry. Um, as we all know, um, uh, yeah, um, recommended systems can be um, modeled by um, the structure of bipartite graph. So on one side we have um, a set of users, and on the other side we have uh, a lot of items where we want to recommend these items to the users. And the connections represents the historical interactions between users and items. And the important feature of this kind of bipartite graph is that the graph is dynamic. So um, uh, there are, could be new users that come in, and there are users that are not, no longer activated, and uh, we want to be able to uh, do recommendation without retraining this model too often. And also, uh, there are many rich node features uh, associated with each node. So users have features and items have features, and uh, they commonly represent, uh, are represented by uh, text, images, uh, video, etc. And we want to be able to incorporate that. So. Um, the reason that we want to use graph neural nets for a recommended system is that we believe that we want the system to uh, naturally incorporate both sources of information. So one source is the content feature. So as we mentioned, there are users and items features in the form of uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, features like images, uh, categories, etc. And on the other side, we have those network structure. So these are the historical user item interactions, and these are represented by the graph structure. And we believe that uh, graph neural net is a natural fit for uh, this kind of task because um, it can incorporate both uh, types of uh, information. And let's first look at uh, um, uh, this concrete application of uh, Pinterest. So Pinterest uh, collects a, uh, a human curated uh, collection of pins. So these pins are visual bookmarks uh, that someone saved from the internet and they want to share with uh, the rest of the world. And the pin features contain things like images, text, and uh, uh, links as well. And users interact with these pins uh, using this uh, uh, concept called boards. So board is a collection of pins that uh, where uh, those pins in the same board share some kind of sim similar aspects. Like we can have a board of cars, board of buildings, board of uh, plants, etc. And um, the task here that we uh, we concern is uh, that given a query pin that the user clicked or the user is interested, we want to recommend some items that the users might also be interested. So this is the related pin kind of task. And a successful recommendation, as shown, should be something that looks similar and users might be interested, whereas a bad recommendation is something that's not related. And the challenge here is that uh, we uh, the Pinterest uh, uh, data is uh, massive. So there are 3 billion pins and boards, and there are 16 billion uh, historical interactions. And these are heterogeneous data. Um, and typical graph embedding algorithms would not be able to um, fit in this case because uh, suppose that you want to learn uh, uh, node to vac or deep work kind of uh, uh, graph embeddings for this network, uh, the number of parameters will scale with the number of uh, pins or the number of nodes in the system, which is going to be uh, not very feasible in that case. And, um, and so we resort to uh, the concept called graph neural nets. So for those who are not very familiar with graph neural net, I will just give a very brief uh, introduction here. So um, in, in the graph neural network, um, uh, we are concerned with learning embeddings for each node. But uh, to compute the embedding of the node, we do not have a fixed uh, architecture. Instead, uh, the computation graph or the, the, computation, uh, the computation is defined um, by the neighborhood of the node that we are uh, interested in. For example, here, suppose that you want to learn embedding for the yellow node A. Uh, what you do is uh, you aggregate the uh, the features or the hidden representations for the neighbors of the node. So in this case, it's the red node, green node, and blue node. And to obtain these representations for red node, green node, and blue node, we in turn look at their own neighborhood. And uh, we compute this um, by this kind of message parsing uh, uh, algorithm. And um, so uh, one thing to note is that although each node has a different computation graph, the parameters are all shared across. So we do not have this exploding uh, parameter space problem. Um, 
And uh, let's, uh, I'll give a brief overview of uh, the PinSage pipeline. So first of all, we collect the set of labels. And these labels are the training pairs from user logs. So if the user clicked something and then it consecutively clicked something else in the same session, then these two have, uh, very similar, uh, have some similarity and we, we want to use these as labels to train the system. And we train the system by generating the embeddings of um, all the pins or all the items in the recommended system such that uh, items that are similar or items that appear in this training pair should have very close embeddings compared to all the other embeddings. And um, at the third step, we generate the embeddings for all pins. So the difference between the second step and the third step is that during training time, we do not have to train on the entire network of Pinterest. Instead, we can just train a subsample of that. And because uh, graph neural nets learns this computation graph rather than learns individual embeddings, we're able to generalize, generalize it and compute embeddings for all the pins or all the items in the, in the recommended system. And finally, um, after generating all the embeddings, we just uh, make recommenders, uh, rec recommendations using nearest labor search in the embedding space, and this is done in real time. Um, so so um, to train the system, uh, this is the loss that we, we use. Um, so given those pairs of positive and negative examples, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the positive pairs, which is U and V, which are the pins that are consecutively clicked, the loss looks like this. So it says that the uh, similarity between the positive part, which is the red part here, should be at least um, as, uh, as large as the similarity of the negative part plus some delta, plus some uh, fixed margin. So we discover that uh, this kind of uh, max margin loss is uh, much better um, uh, for a graph neural net in the context of recommended system compared to uh, previous um, algorithms. And as we mentioned, because there are, uh, this graph is massive, so there are 3 billion nodes and 16 billion edges, and this is like 10,000 times larger than the data set that we have, um, uh, that the previous graph neural net applications have done. And um, to enable this kind of efficiency, we have the following uh, key, key aspects that we want to, uh, that, that, that enables this, uh, this efficiency. So um, first, it's, uh, uh, we subsample the neighborhood for efficient GPU batching, and we use a parallel producer-consumer pipeline um, to train this system efficiently. And third, we use curriculum training, to, curriculum learning to ensure fast convergence. Uh, so this is about negative samples that we'll, I will talk about later. And lastly, we use MapReduce for if, um, efficient inference. And at inference step, we're computing uh, all the embeddings for um, everything in the, in the, in the system. Uh, oh, sorry, every item in the recommended system. So I'll detail each of these aspects uh, here. So in the, uh, um, a, as we already see, because each, each node has a different computation graph, so uh, because they have different uh, neighborhoods, uh, the computation graphs are uni not uniform. So when we put those into a same mini batch and we put it into a GPU, we're not able to uh, do very efficient matrix multiplication there. So uh, instead, what we do is we do subsampling. So we make sure that we sample a fixed number of neighbors for each node, such that uh, uh, the computation graph now looks the same. Right. And so, so now we can do an efficient batching uh, at GPU. And uh, how do we do sampling? So traditionally, uh, for example, in the previous uh, uh, approach, GraphSage, uh, what, what they do is uh, basically by um, uh, sampling uniformly uh, the neighbors of the node. But what we do is uh, uh, we want the sample to be efficient. We want the sample to capture, um, capture similarities between the sampled node and the target node. So we use a random walk-based neighborhood. So instead of using like immediate neighbors, we use a, uh, we, we choose neighbors that has uh, the highest uh, approximate personal page, right, uh, page rank score. So what, what we do is uh, we do a, a bunch of random walks starting from the node, and then we count how many random walks pass through each node, and we, we pick those nodes that are, have the highest uh, score. And the advantage of this kind of uh, neighborhood definition, slightly relaxed neighborhood, is that it finds the most relevant node to the current node. And uh, this, allows for, um, um, this allows for a larger receptive field. And like, uh, in practice, we can observe that some nodes, although not connected to, directly connected to the target node, 
but they are uh, very, very related. So in that case, our, our random walk-based neighborhood definition can capture these kind of neighbors, uh, these kind of nodes. And secondly, uh, we have this uh, producer-consumer pipeline. So in the training stage, we discovered that uh, there are two things uh, going on in parallel. So uh, the, uh, the job of CPU is to, do, uh, is to select the batch of pins, run this random walk, subsampling, and then com construct this computation graph for each node in the mini batch. And uh, at the same time, the GPU is doing multi-layer aggregation, it's doing loss computation, and it's doing backpropagation. And we want to uh, do those two things together. So when the GPU is uh, doing this uh, backpropagation for the current mini batch, the CPU is already preparing the computation graph for the next batch of nodes. So this saved, uh, significantly saves the uh, performance overhead. Uh, um, and um, so in, uh, so when choosing the negative samples, it is important to dis distinguish between easy and hard negative samples. So given a source pin, we define easy ex negative examples as like a random negative examples or a random item chosen from the pool of all items. So ch because the graph is so large, chances are what you pick is not very similar. And the network is easy to ch tell that this is not similar compared to the positive examples. But we, we also want to choose these hard negative samples, which are negative samples that look very similar to the positive samples. Uh, to the source pins, but not as similar as the positive examples. So because um, our, our data size is so large and uh, the recommended system is probably just going to pick like a few hundred uh, candidates, we want to make sure that it has this like one out of one million uh, resolution and it is able to distinguish those that are most similar to those that are just slightly similar. So the idea is that using curriculum learning, we start by um, uh, training training the entire system with just easy negative examples. And as the training goes on, we incorporate or inject more and more hard negative examples so that it gains higher and higher uh, resolution. And it's also, um, in, it also ensures fast convergence of the model. And finally, um, to, to generate, um, to generate um, embeddings for all the pins, um, um, we want to make sure that this step is efficient as well. And uh, the inference is done using MapReduce. This is because we observed that during many batch training, uh, there are a lot of repeated computation, right? Uh, because all the neighborhoods overlap and uh, node representations are computed multiple times. So rather than doing that, uh, at the inference step, uh, we're doing this layer-wise uh, MapReduce computation of all the node embeddings. So intuitively, what we do is um, we first compute the first layer representations for all nodes. And then, we, uh, based on the first layer, we compute the second layer representation for all nodes. Um, and um, yeah, so, so um, let's look at the performance of the, our system. So uh, during, um, during offline test and during A-B test as well, we discovered that PinSage performs 72% better in terms of recommendation quality than standard uh, previous GraphSage model. So we believe that the uh, key, key innovation is that first we do this uh, intelligent subsampling according to the personalized page rank score. And secondly, we use curriculum training to ensure that the model really learns the high resolution that is required by this kind of web skill recommender systems. Um, so in the offline test, we compare our model with uh, baselines, which are deep uh, state-of-the-art content-based models that, uh, that are based on visual features and annotation features. And uh, uh, we, we, we discover that our model uh, ranks the true next clicked pin or the true positive examples much higher compared to uh, those baselines. And um, I can't say too much about this, but uh, it's currently deployed at Pinterest, uh, and it shows significant gains in terms of uh, A-B test uh, uh, using metrics like uh, uh, CTR uh, click-through rates and uh, user engagement. Um, uh, finally, I just want to give a few examples of intuition, like why, why PinSage does much better than uh, either content-based or um, or graph-based or collaborative filtering type of approach. So uh, in this example, the, the image on the left is the query ping, and uh, each row on the right is uh, corresponds to a recommended systems um, that uses, the first row is use, using visual features, the second row is using annotation, the third row is using a, a, a graph-based um, uh, graph-based or the user interaction-based recommended system, and last row is our system. So. Um, 
so whereas in the uh, in the uh, visual visual recommender system, it tends to uh, recommend things that look very similar, but they are not of the same category. Uh, for example, it recommends like Korean food uh, because it just looks very similar with the plants. Um, whereas uh, in the in the graph-based uh, recommender system, it generates or uh, it recommends things that are, look similar that have the same category, but it, they are not closely related. Uh, but in, in the pin, in Pinsage case, uh, we're able to recommend items uh, that are consistently more similar, um, in both in terms of appearance and quality, um, uh, category with the query. And for example, this one, um, um, the, the image is about logging, um, but the visual feature is sort of confusing with like war and farming and things like that. But we're able to generate things that are uh, of much higher quality. So uh, if you're interested, come to our poster tonight at 160. And thank you very much. <laughs>